Hello there brothers and welcome to your new Bible study. Sorry for not uploading, uploading yesterday. I was making the video and then my wife called me with the kids. <laughs> I had to figure out how to uh, yeah, maintain a good schedule to make the videos and to upload it every day. But give me some time and I hope to uh, get back to you every, every day. Um, yeah, so let's start with Titus 1 verse 6 where Paul starts with a list of qualifications for Christian elders. An elder must be blameless, the husband of but one wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. In the previous verse we learned that Paul left Titus in Crete to straighten out what was left unfinished and appoint elders in every town. On the island of Crete. Starting with his verse and progressing through verse 9, Paul will list the qualification for Christian elders, similar to ones in 1 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 7. Second, Verse 6 includes three major qualifications, and I will list them for you. The first is the elder must have exemplary, exemplary moral character. Second, the elder must be known as the husband of one wife, literally translated from Greek as a one-woman man. Although this phrase was produced much controversy through the ages, it simply addresses two issues. A. At the time, elders would necessarily have to be men as women would not have been accepted as leaders of a local house church in either the prevailing Jewish culture or among the gentle Christians on Crete. And B. Although an elder did not have to be married, this phrase implies he is committed and faithful to one wife. This requirement says nothing about past marriages, divorce or being widowed. The focus is on the elder's current marital relationship. And the third qualification is the children of the elder must not reject God. This does not apply to children who, because of their youth, have not yet developed a well-defined personal faith in Christ, nor does it apply to those who are old enough to live on their own, outside their parents' control. Simply stated, the elders' children should not have a reputation for wealth partying, disobedience, nor unbelief. Brothers, the conduct of our family reveals a lot about us. How we honor our wives by remaining faithful speaks of our ability to love them and remain self-controlled when temptation vies for our attention. And our children, who watch everything, will choose to follow our example because God's love overflows from us to them, or reject it because our, they find us hypocritical, neglectful, or excessively harsh. Let's look at the way we treat our wives and children today. May we learn to value and care for them as much as our Lord values them. For those without children or unmarried, let us continue to let God's love shine through us to our extended families, the family we have in God and the children in our lives. May God bless us all.